Hi guys, uh, this lecture is on protein synthesis. Um, we're going to start out real quick in the nucleus. Um, and a couple of things that you need to know. Um, this is the nucleus. Transcription occurs in the nucleus. Um, remember, the nucleus is a um, membrane-bound um, area that contains genetic information in the form of DNA. Um, it also has the it also has these um, nuclear pores that are small holes in the nuclear envelope. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the information from DNA, we're going to be making it into mRNA or messenger RNA, and that is going to be translated or read and translated into um, amino acids, which are eventually going to form a very long polypeptide chain of amino acids, which eventually, when long enough, will form a protein. Now, a couple of different things that you need to know is that um, one very important thing is this is really where we get a lot of um, our variation in life, um, our genetic variation, because there are about 20 different amino acids. And so um, that can make a lot of different combinations um, if you put them all together in one long strand. So that means it can make a lot of different types of proteins. Um, so that's one thing. A couple other things. Um, transcription occurs in the nucleus, and translation occurs out here in the cytoplasm. And if you remember your cells, cytoplasm is the area where all the organelles are, and the cytosol is that juicy, jello-y, plasma-type stuff um, that holds all the organelles in place. So this little snowman guy, or peanut-looking guy, is our ribosome, and that is basically a complex of different parts that with the help of our RNA is going to come together um, to make and be assembled to make a full ribosome. And those two things, the rRNA or ribosomal RNA and the ribosome, are going to help to oversee translation. So taking that um, information in the form of an mRNA molecule and translating it into amino acids, which will eventually become a protein. So this whole thing is how we make proteins. So let's get started. First thing you need to know is in the nucleus, during transcription, we're going to start off with a DNA molecule. And remember, DNA is a really very large molecule. Um, in fact, it's so big that the only way out of the nucleus is for the nuclear envelope to actually break down. And unfortunately, it's not going to do that for this process. Um, so what we need to do and what life has kind of decided to do is to take that information that's locked up in DNA um, in those nucleotides that make up DNA. And remember, um, you might want to look over what a nucleotide is, but you have your 5-carbon or pentose sugar, you've got a phosphate group, um, and then you have your nitrogenous base which could be either adenine, cytosine, thymine, um, or guanine. And remember, A's always go with T's, and C's always go with G's when you're bonding. So this is our DNA. And I'm actually just going to bring this over a little bit and blow it up. OK. So this is our DNA. And I'm going to say that this is A, C, and G. OK. So our DNA um, is a very long strand, okay? We've, we've unwound it, we've separated it into two different strands, and we're going to take the information and copy it onto an mRNA molecule. Now, these have many, many um, very long um, sequences of nucleotides, and I'm just showing you three of them because each combination um, or each sequence of three nucleotides is actually, for DNA, what we call a triplet. And these are eventually going to be read um, to make codons. Codons are another sequence of three nucleotides, but on the mRNA. So let's make our mRNA. So this is um, our messenger RNA. Okay. And again, this sequence of three uh, nucleotides is called a codon. Okay. So now... Unlike making DNA and replicating it, usually the A would go with T, C would go with G, and G would go with C. But unfortunately, um, we don't have T's to work with with 
um, RNA, we have U's. Remember, U takes the place, or uracil takes the place of T thymine, okay? So A is actually going to go with U, G with C, that doesn't change, and I'm sorry, um, G with C down here, okay? So um, the way you can tell the difference is if you have a strand that has a U in it, then you know you're dealing with RNA, and if obviously it's in the nucleus, then you know you're dealing with mRNA specifically. If you have a strand that has a T in it, then you know you're dealing with DNA. All right, a couple different things have to happen before we can actually exit the nucleus, and I'm just going to drop this over here. The first thing that we need to do to that mRNA molecule before it can actually make its way out of the nucleus, and I'm just going to draw, oops, let's just say this is our mRNA molecule. And remember, it's just a strand. It's like a ribbon. It's very, very small. Um, compared to DNA anyway. Let's just say that that has a 3' prime end and a 5' prime end, just like DNA does. So when we were talking about um, replicating DNA, we were talking a little bit about how DNA has a 5' prime end and a 3' prime end. That doesn't change for RNA at all. It has the same same 5 and 3' prime ends, okay? Um, but a couple of things have to happen. First thing that has to happen, we have to give the 3' prime end, okay, what we call a poly A tail. And that A actually stands for adenine, adenine, adenine excuse me, um, which are your A nucleotides, okay? And there's actually hundreds of these nucleotides that get added, hundreds of those, that get added onto the three prime end of the mRNA. Um, so it's a very long, long sequence, and it doesn't stop. It's just constant A's um, or adenines. Um, now, what does that actually do? Well, one, it helps it, um, the mRNA molecule get out of the nucleus so that it can, tr you know, continue on to um, the second process of translation. But then it also helps the mRNA from any kind of damage that might happen to it. Um, and it also helps when you have to remember that every time this mRNA is read and translated um, f to make proteins, it kind of gets used a little bit, so it gets degraded a little bit. So these two ends, whatever we're adding to these two ends, such as that poly A tail, is going to help um, make sure that very little or no degradation happens to those ends, okay? Because otherwise, um, if it gets down to the point where we start getting actual nucleotide sequences, it's going to be no good. All right, so that's one thing that has to happen. The second thing that has to happen, we have to add a five, pi five prime cap. And what that is, is right over here on the five prime end of the mRNA, we have a specially altered nucleotide. And it kind of does the same thing as a poly A tail. Um, however, there's one difference. It actually keeps the mRNA molecule stabilized during translation. So it's kind of important that way. But it also helps the mRNA exit the nucleus, and it protects it again from degradation because we need that protection on both ends. So that's a couple of things that you need to know um, about the mRNA molecule before it can exit <clears throat> the nucleus. Two other things. Um, the information that's stored in these nucleotide sequences, you're going to get what we call a start codon, which again is a sequence of three nucleotides, and it looks like this. It's AUG, and that's always going to mean start, to start translation. So once the ribosome is actually reading this mRNA strand, it's going to come across this AUG sequence and say, oh, we can start translation now. Now, once it's done and we've kind of gotten close to the end of that mRNA molecule or that strand, okay, um, you're going to find a stop codon. And a stop codon, again, is a sequence of three nucleotides, and they look like this. There's UAA, UAG, and UGA. Okay, um, you should be familiar with both of these, but especially this one. Okay, you should know that by heart. Um, now, these codons are very important, um, but the rest of the sequences, the other codons in the mRNA, are obviously going to translate into different amino acids. All right, so let's get back over here. Let's blow this up. So now once a, um, our mRNA... I want to get this a little bit bigger. Once our mRNA has got the poly A tail and the 5' cap on there, it can make its way 
out of the nucleus through a nuclear pore. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to find its way. Let's enlarge this area a little bit. Oop. Out into the nucleus. So it's going to hook up with a ribosome. So nothing really has happened. Okay, we still have our mRNA here. And we have our um, codon here, which is UGC. Okay. Um, remember, this is our ribosome. I'm just going to put ribo there. And it is um, kind of related with um, our RNA. I shouldn't say related, but they work together. And they're going to oversee translation. Remember, we're in the nucleus now, so that's kind of important. So over in the wing, hanging out, I'm going to draw some amino acids here, is going to be a tRNA. And a tRNA molecule kind of looks like this. Okay, but I don't like to draw it like that. Um, it's a little too difficult to do that. So I like to kind of make it look like a cone hanger, okay? Its job is going to pick up, is to be to, to pick up an, um, uh, an amino acid. And we kind of think of tRNA as like a taxi um, because it's basically it transports amino acids to the mRNA molecule. So once it picks up that amino acid, and that amino acid is specific to its anticodon, which is right here. So that's what we call an anticodon. And in anticodon, in Greek and Latin, anti means against or opposite. And codon, obviously, is a sequence of three. So it should be the opposite of your codon. So you need to know that this anticodon has to have letters or mRNA letters or RNA letters that are going to complement this mRNA. So U would go with A, G with C, and C with G. Okay, so there we go. That is our anticodon. Once, oh, and we've we've been kind of doing this for a while. Let's just say trans, um, translation has been going. So we had our AUG, um, and translation has been going. So we've we've got a pretty good chain of amino acids going here. So, all right. So once this codon pops up tRNA is going to be like, oh, that's me, kind of like waiting in line and waiting for your number to be called. So it's going to come over. It knows that its anticodon is going to perfectly match up and complement that codon. Okay, so let's just draw this. Remember, it's still got its amino acid. Okay, so once it hooks up, the ribosome and the rRNA is going to check to make sure that it does indeed complement each other perfectly. Once it does that, Basically what we get is a bond that forms. And this bond, I'm going to bring this over a little bit, is what we call a peptide bond. And peptide bonds are found in between all of the amino acids in the chain. They're the ones that are going to bond all those amino acids together. And remember, you have 20 different amino acids, and they can go in any different combination. You could have four or five of the same amino acid in a row, um, but they're going to go in any different combination um, once they've begun. So that peptide bond is going to be begin to form, and we have one here, here, and if there was a longer chain, between all the rest of them. So once that solidifies, and now we've formed a complete bond, basically we're forming what we call um, a polypeptide, poly meaning many, peptide referring to that peptide bond, a polypeptide chain of amino acids, and I'm just going to put AAs here, so amino acids. Once this chain gets long enough, okay, and we've reached the stop codon, we've basically formed um, a primary protein. It hasn't really been completely developed. Um, if you need to, you should look through, look over all your information about forming um, your, your primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary um, levels of protein formation. Um, so all that different folding that happens, but this is our primary level of um, kind of that string of pearls level 
of a protein. But once this get, gets long enough and we've reached our stop codon, we've essentially formed a protein at its very basic level. Um, so let me just write that up here. Okay, so let's say this is the last one that we have to put on there. Okay, once tRNA um, drops that off, so once tRNA drops that off, um, and that bond forms, okay, it's going to drop off this amino acid, all right, and it's going to actually shoot back out into the cytoplasm by itself without an amino acid, because it, remember, it kind of dropped off its passenger there. So it's going to go back out into the cytoplasm, and just like an enzyme, it's not going to be degraded at all or dissolved at all or anything like that. It's not going to be used up. So it's ready to go again. It wants to pick up another amino acid um, that would match its anticodon, okay? And then it's gonna wait again until basically its number comes up or its correct codon comes up and it's gonna swing in there and um, it's going to complement that codon and drop off its amino acid. So this right here is very cyclical, okay? So, and that is how a protein forms. Hope this helps.